Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Richard. Today we're going to look at another type of factoring called difference of squares. And we're going to look at how our current method of factoring, factoring by grouping, compares with the shortcut that we have for difference of squares. So do we know how to factor this? X squared minus 25. So far we have factored trinomials, or tri means three, so polynomials with three terms. Because I don't know how to do this, I can convert it into something that I do know how to do. I do know how to do this, x squared plus 0x minus 25. Notice I did not change the problem at all. Adding a 0x in the center doesn't matter. It doesn't change our problem. They are equivalent. So every time in math when you don't know how to do something, change it into a form you do know how to work with. So for example, if we took this x squared minus 25 and put 0x in the middle, if we did our steps for factor by grouping, there's no greatest common factor. 1, 0, and negative 25 have nothing in common. Then we do head times butt. 1 times negative 25 is negative 25. If I start listing the factors of negative 25, I want two numbers that multiply to head times butt, or negative 25, and add to get the gut of 0. If we list the factors, we know one has to be positive, one has to be negative, because that's the only way to get a negative number in multiplication. So we could have negative one times 25, one times tw negative 25, or five times negative five. Notice because I want a zero x, I need to go with the five and minus five. So for negative 25, we're going to work with five and negative five. If I take this zero x, and I break it up into 5x minus 5x, or if you reversed it, negative 5x plus 5x, that equals 0x. So far, we have written three different functions, polynomials, that are equivalent. If we factor by grouping and we look at these two sets of two terms, we needed to get four terms so we could break it up into two sets of two. x squared and 5x have an x in common, and what's left over is x plus 5 negative 5x and negative 25 have a negative 5 in common. And what's left over is x plus 5. You want your x plus 5 and x plus 5, your parentheses, to match. So I have x minus 5, and then x plus 5 is left over. Then you could always check your answers by multiplying it out. Notice x times x is x squared x times 5 is 5x, negative 5 times x is negative 5x, these two middle terms cancel out to get our 0x, and negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. Notice how if I have a minus and a plus here, the middle terms will eventually cancel out. I'm going to go through a couple of examples, and I want you to think about what you notice. So x squared minus 9 factors to x plus 3 times x minus 3 x squared minus 16 factors to x minus 4 times x plus 4. 9x squared minus 25 factors to 3x minus 5 times 3x plus 5. 4x squared minus 1 factors to 2x minus 1 times 2x plus 1. Take a minute to think about what you notice. We have the same factors, except one is with a plus sign and one is with a minus sign. So there's a shortcut for difference of squares. Now, a difference of squares, the word difference is subtraction or minus. And squares are perfect squares. So something times something, something times itself is a number. That's a perfect square. So do you know your perfect squares? Here's a short list, just of some. Obviously, there's an infinite amount of perfect squares. You get perfect squares by multiplying the number by itself. So the most common ones that we're going to deal with are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, and so forth. If we take a look at this shortcut, we can solve all three of these problems using the 0x as our middle term. But if you want to save yourself time, and if you recognize a pattern, we can use a shortcut called difference of squares. All of these are subtraction, minus, minus, minus. That is the difference. Each term is a perfect square in itself. So if we look at the one on the left, we already know what the answer should be from before. But I can say the square root of the first term, 
the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of the second term, the square root of 25, is 5. So I know x and 5. So I can conclude that the factors are x plus 5 times x minus 5. If you multiply that out, you will get x squared minus 25. If we look at another one, 4x squared minus 49, 4x squared is a perfect square. The square root of 4x squared is 2x. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of x squared is x. Similarly, the square root of 49 is 7. So if we combine 2x and 7, we have 2x plus 7 and 2x minus 7. For 16x to the 4th minus 9, the square root of 16x to the 4th is 4x squared, and the square root of 9 is 3. So we have 4x squared plus 3 times 4x squared minus 3. This only works for perfect squares. For example, if you had 3x squared, there's no square root of 3. It's not a perfect square, so that doesn't work. It's only for perfect squares. So for the difference of squares, we have this formula we can use. x squared, a squared minus b squared is the square root of the first term and the square root of the second term, so a minus b times a plus b. Warning, there is no sum of squares. So there is no such thing as a squared plus b squared. It only works for a squared minus b squared. Go ahead and work on your Schoology assignment now, and please ask your teacher if you have any questions. Have a great day.